Are you ANA positive and worried you have lupus? Honestly, there's so much info out there on lupus and the ANA test that it can be very easy to throw ourselves into a frenzy of worry. And it doesn't help that we usually have to wait on average three months to get in to see a rheumatologist like me. So although this can't replace an actual visit with a rheumatologist, today we're going to talk about the symptoms that typically lead to an ANA being checked in the first place, help you understand those symptoms from the rheumatologist's point of view, and set you up to have the best appointment possible with your doctor. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going into the details of what the ANA is. For that, you can check out this other video. So let me just repeat what I repeat a bajillion times in that video. A positive ANA by itself does not make a diagnosis of anything. It is simply a data point. A data point that we use to potentially give us information about your immune system, but that's it. So how do we know if that ANA means lupus? To make that judgment, we take into account blood work, including, but not limited to, the ANA, your symptoms, and what we see when we do a physical exam. We take all that information, and with the guidance of our classification criteria, which are imperfect, and our experience, which is biased, we make a diagnosis. So, you know, easy. No. If you Google, do I have lupus, it will list out the common symptoms in lupus. And in fact, I have a video where I did that too. But here's the thing. Two people can have a positive ANA, skin rash, joint pain, and fatigue, and one will be diagnosed with lupus and one won't. So what gives? Yeah, what gives? Well, let's go through these particular symptoms, which are very often the reason someone starts down this journey, and discuss some of the distinguishing factors that would point towards or away a diagnosis of lupus. Joint pain, muscle pain, body pain, just pain. Pain is oftentimes a symptom that drives someone to have their ANA checked in the first place, but it is certainly not specific to lupus. And although all kinds of pain can be related to lupus, oftentimes what the doctor will be looking for is inflammatory joint pain, namely synovitis. So what is synovitis? Well, itis is inflammation and synov is for synovium. The synovium is a lining of our joints and in autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, it can become inflamed. Synovitis is a specific finding and different from just having joint pain or feeling joint swelling. Detecting synovitis on a physical exam is a specific skill of rheumatologists and something a lot of other types of doctors aren't really great at. But before I pat myself too hard on the back, I must concede that even rheumatologists can miss synovitis. We may then have to rely on an MRI or ultrasound to show us if someone has synovitis. A joint with synovitis will feel swollen, boggy, and warm and tender to touch and will not feel bony. So when it comes to seeing if joint pain is lupus joint pain, the question the doctor is asking themselves is, does this person have synovitis? So how can you help the doc answer that question? So do you wake up stiff in your joints in the morning? And if so, how long does it take to get moving comfortably? Spoiler, synovitis usually causes about an hour of morning stiffness. Can you specify which joints hurt or is your pain more diffuse, like in your muscles and your joints? What kind of activities or over-the-counter meds make your pain better or worse? All right, what's the second most common reason people get an ANA checked? Skin rashes. Lupus can be associated with all kinds of skin rashes, the most classic being the malar or butterfly rash, which is when the rash extends across the face, cheek to nose to cheek, sparing the nasolabial folds. But even this classic finding can be confusing as rosacea can appear very similar to a malar rash. When it comes to rashes, rheumatologists are going to look at one, where it is, and two, if it's associated with sun exposure. So rashes across the face, the front of the chest or the fingers will raise red flags, as do rashes that consistently come out or worsen with sun exposure. I gotta be honest though, these traits are not super specific, and if a rash is the only symptom someone has, we may need the help of our dermatology colleagues to weigh in and possibly do a skin biopsy to help confirm a diagnosis of lupus. Flaky, itchy rashes that occur around our knees, elbows, or shins can be associated with eczema or psoriasis, and although these can be seen in lupus, are usually not part of lupus. 
So when thinking about your rashes, ask yourself, does this rash come out when I've been out in the sun? Does it hurt or is it itchy? Does someone else in my family have a similar rash? And then of course we have fatigue. Fatigue is a booger bear because it is certainly a problem for most people with lupus, but most people with fatigue don't have lupus. Fatigue can come from any number of causes. It's also a because rheumatologists aren't always great at fully understanding fatigue and asking the right questions. Mainly because we don't have a good way of distinguishing lupus fatigue from other kinds of fatigue, making the right questions difficult to ask. So for this, I'm going to recommend taking the time to understand your fatigue so you can best describe it to whatever doctor or provider you find yourself talking to. What does fatigue mean to you? Do you have days you don't or can't get out of bed? Are you able to do your work, fulfill your responsibilities, but go to bed wiped every day? Is your energy sporadic? Meaning you may have a good day and get a lot done and then pay for it a couple days later by not being able to get out of bed. Are there responsibilities around the house, at school or at work you are no longer able to do? When did you first start noticing the fatigue and what else was going on in your life at the time? Have there been any changes to your routine, your family or work life or your menstrual cycle that could point to other causes of your fatigue? When attempting to convey your experience of fatigue to your doctor, I find it best to provide concrete examples as the term fatigue is just thrown around a lot and it's difficult to know what that means. So how does this apply to your ANA and help you understand if you have lupus or not? Well, the fatigue of lupus, like I said, isn't particularly specific, but it tends to be more on the severe side. People will often find themselves missing school or work as they can't get out of bed, or they come home and crash and can never catch up on rest despite how much they sleep. And although they may have good and bad days, without treatment, especially in the beginning, they don't tend to have super good days. Getting a positive ANA can rattle even the most sturdy amongst us. And let's be honest, we aren't usually feeling our best when we have it tested. It doesn't help that the interweb is full of information on lupus symptoms, many of which you may have. But what is often not discussed in these lists is the nuance behind each one of these symptoms. One person's joint pain, rash, or fatigue can be very different from someone else's and can lead to two very different interpretations of their ANA. I hope this gave you some insights and perspective in how we approach this problem and gave you some ideas to think about when considering your own situation. Getting the right diagnosis your first time out is a lot more likely when you can team up with your doctor and have open communication. If you have an appointment with any specialist coming up when you want to talk about the possibility of lupus or really any other autoimmune disease, I highly recommend checking out the free autoimmune home run handbook as it was built specifically to help you prepare for your appointment so you can limit the back and forth and trial and error. There's even a lupus special edition and it's free. Thanks so much for joining me today. As always, if you think this information was helpful, it really helps if you like, subscribe, and share this with anyone you think could benefit. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.